Today, I have a story for you about five queen ants and their journeys to start new colonies. It's been over a month now since this adventure began, and the last several weeks have held joyful breakthroughs and major challenges. At first glance, ants and test tubes may not seem like much of a story, but these are the humble beginnings of what I hope will become thriving ant colonies. However, the founding process is the most strenuous undertaking in the life of a queen ant. Their performance over the next couple months will mean life or death for their future dynasties. So, let's meet the queens and follow the growth of their colonies from the very beginning. Okay, maybe not the very beginning. This is actually week two because I didn't think that I'd be making a video, but it's become such an exciting part of my week every Saturday, I just had to. We'll start with our first carpenter ant queen. She's darker in color than the others, so I think she might be a different species. She didn't have any eggs last week, so these four eggs is a big jump forward. I'm thinking about naming this colony something with an adventure or explorer theme like Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider. We'll see. Queen 2 still has her wings, which most likely means she's a virgin. But in hopes that she miraculously proves us wrong, I'm calling her Queen Mary. Next up, we have what I've identified as a golden carpenter ant queen. In one week, she's gone from three eggs to seven. And by the way, she was guarding them like precious treasure. I decided to name her Anne Bonnie, the pirate queen. Our next queen is huge. I even had to put her in a jumbo sized test tube just so she would be able to turn around. She's also a golden carpenter ant, and I just love her brilliant gold color. I want her name to be grand and royal, so I'm thinking Queen Midas. She's definitely my favorite. The only thing that worries me is that she still doesn't have any eggs after two weeks. I'm really hoping she pulls through, but only time will tell. Our final queen is a totally different genus altogether. This is the Queen of Spades, a harvester ant. And as you can see by her pile of brood, she's definitely in the lead so far. But she had a bit of a head start since she was shipped to me. One week later, and it's time to check on their progress. The box and foam block help to keep it quiet and dampen vibrations. The test tubes provide a water source and humidity for their eggs. This simulates the founding chamber that they would naturally create for themselves in the wild. Here's our first colony, which I've named the Relic Raiders. I'm still deciding on a name for her though, maybe Laura Croft or Indiana. She's looking healthy and has laid another egg. That's five eggs for the Relic Raiders. Second is Queen Mary, who still doesn't have any eggs. Once a new queen mates, their wings typically fall off and they use the protein in that leftover muscle tissue to feed their first batch of larvae. We'll give her one more week. Next in line is the Pirate Queen, Anne Bonnie, which I think I'm going to rename to Ant Bonnie because that would be a missed opportunity. I also have an Ant Bonnie who lives in Montana and she's the best. I'm naming her colony the Golden Galleons to go with the pirate theme. No change in the number of eggs from last week. Now, let's check on the Queen of Spades, who seems very active right now. Taking a closer look, I can see that... Hold up. Last week she had nine eggs, one pupa, and three larvae. There's the pupa, the eggs. But she's missing a larva. She must have eaten it. Sometimes queens will eat their brood if they're stressed out or no longer feel safe. It's common for them to eat their eggs during shipping, but that was three weeks ago. She still has plenty of brood, so I'm not too concerned, but let's hope she doesn't eat any more. Finally, it's time to check on Queen Midas. I'm really nervous that she still may not have any eggs. Here we go, the moment of truth. Yes, she has eggs. This girl took her time, but managed to finally lay three decently sized eggs. I now declare your new colony the Minions of Midas. Keep up the good work. Week 4 started out pretty well. Queen Midas still has 3 eggs from last week. Aunt Bonnie still has 7 for the third week in a row, so I think she might be done. The Relic Raiders gained 2 more, so they are also now at 7. Queen Mary wasn't looking too good. So rather than let her starve to death in a tube, I figured the best thing I could do was to release her outside. When I went to check on the Queen of Spades, I noticed something was terribly wrong. She had eaten the pupa. Why? The life cycle of an ant goes from egg, larva, pupa, then finally an adult worker. Was she hungry? Maybe she needed more protein for the rest of the brood. 
If so, why eat the one that was just a week or two away from becoming her first worker that could bring her food? This didn't make any sense. I placed a fruit fly in her tube in hopes that that would stop her from eating any more and left her for another week. After last week, I was nervous to check on the Queen of Spades, so I'll save her for last. The Relic Raiders were looking good with one, two, three, four, five, six eggs? That's one less than last week. Not you too. This had me worried about the others, but to my surprise, Aunt Bonnie had actually laid one more. After three weeks with seven eggs, I thought she was done. So that's eight now for the Golden Galleons. Now for Queen Midas, who has one, two, three, four, five. That's two more from last week. She is really cool to watch, and because she's so big, you can see a lot of details. It was such a relief to see her looking strong and healthy. On the other hand, we have our problem child, who has yet again eaten three more of her eggs. Stop eating your babies. Something was very wrong with the spades, and that's when I realized just how filthy their test tube was. Maybe these conditions were the cause of our problems, but I don't want to cause her any more stress. So I connected a clean test tube and gave her 24 hours to move in. The next day, I pushed out her test tube, only to find that she was still there. That's when I noticed that her water was almost empty, so she wouldn't be able to stay there for much longer anyway. Something had to be done, but I couldn't just dump her into the new tube. This transition needed to be as stress-free as possible. So I left the old test tube exposed to light to encourage her to retreat into the dark safety of the clean tube. I kept an eye on her for about an hour, and she showed little interest in venturing into the cave anytime soon. So I wrapped the new tube in foil to make it nice and cozy so I could put the other queens away. I left her for another hour. No movement. It was now a standoff at this point between me and the queen of spades. Another hour went by. This girl was not moving. She was stubborn and was making it clear that she wasn't gonna move. Maybe she was stressed out. I can't imagine why. Then I just happened to walk in at the right moment, right as she was picking up a larva and carrying it into the tunnel. Finally, she was moving in. But after checking in a while later, she hadn't moved the rest. Finally, after six hours, I found that the tube was empty. The queen of spades had moved out. With a sigh of relief, I disconnected the old tube and took a closer look. She was clearly agitated, but hopefully this new home would be the answer to our problems. I reunited her with the other queens and left her for another week. My heart was pounding. What would I find in the spades test tube? With a steady hand, I slowly pulled out the tube to reveal the queen. And there she was. And this is what remained of her brood. A mere five small eggs. I was crushed. Even though this isn't the end of her story, I was really hoping this video would have a happy ending. But the reality of nature is often brutal. She never ate the fruit fly that I gave her, so I've ruled out hunger and her environment. My only remaining theory is that once a week check-ins are just too frequent for her and causing her to not feel safe. This could also be the case for the Relic Raiders, who also lost another egg this week and is down to five. We now have a three-way tie with five, five, and five, as Queen Midas has been slowly but steadily growing her pile. That makes me happy. She is so cool. Lastly, Aunt Bonnie yet again laid another egg, putting her in the lead as our most prolific egg layer with nine eggs. I'm going to leave them be for two weeks this time, in hopes that we'll reverse this downward trend for the spades and the relic raiders. Will it work? We'll have to wait and see next time, as their story continues. Thanks for watching.